um before calling the next speaker Thank i you. would like to acknowledge um my postdoc host professor Abraham Olivia, who is the director of Center for Phenomenology in South Africa at the University of Fort Hay. Prof, you are welcome to this conference. Our next speaker is Dr. Enyiba Maduka, who will be speaking to us on Jonathan Chimakunam's Ismail's logic, some extensions and clarifications. Dr. Madoka Enyiba is a senior lecturer in the Department of Philosophy, University of Calabar. His research and teaching interests are in African philosophy, environmental ethics, developmental studies, and epistemology. He is an international conference speaker, boss person, and author of numerous articles in reputable journals. Dr. Madoka, please speak to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amara, for, the, for inviting me to this talk. And... Uh, I also want to thank everyone who uh, who is here, and uh, the last speaker, the keynote speaker, Professor Lujakov, my teacher. Thank you for that rich presentation of uh, Ijoma's work. I'll be talking on Jonathan Chimakonam's Ismezu logic, some extensions and clarifications. What I'm going to do is to present a brief background to the development of is amazing logic and then i will give a brief summary of the main thrust of chima konam's is amazing logic next i will now try to highlight the three basic assumptions and the two basic principles out of the many principles that undergird the logical system and then i will show how these reflect and shape the african conscious experience of the world I will then show the show how these assumptions and principles also signify a form of skepticism in contemporary African philosophy. I will end my talk by unveiling the nature of this form of skepticism and demonstrating its importance in the growth of contemporary African philosophy. So let me begin with background to his major logic. Logic proceeds from thought system. And thought system is generated from a culture. And this is so with the Aristotelian two-value logic from the Western thought system that had held sway for centuries and had patterned the nature of uh, reasoning and thought and theory formations over the years. However, these two valid logic emanating from the Western thought system and culture has some challenges. And I would mention just two of them, and that one of them is uh, the problem of bivalence and the problem of determinism. Here in bivalence, this thought system holds that every statement is either true or false. Why this might be true in quite a number of uh, 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 climes and, and, and cultures, it is limited in all other cultures and climes, like, like, like the African thought system. And this also creates the problem of binary opposites. And this is one of the things that logicians, both in the West and, and, and Africa, have been trying to see how they can transcend. The second challenge is the notion of determinism in two value logic. And that is where we have the expression that every statement is either necessary or impossible, pointing to a kind of determinism. And this is also a flow from the bivalent uh, uh, thesis of the two valued logic. Of the western culture and so many scholars of west and africa like g hegel um not whitehead um Leibniz, and of course the 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 polish logician lucas Sewix, have all tried to find solution to this uh two valid problem two valid logic uh, challenges and limitations They've all identified the fact that 
the three traditional laws of thought that undergade uh, two value logic is not expressive enough to uh, entertain or accommodate some other cultures and realities outside the West. You know, so as a result of that, effort have been made to find solution to this problem. For instance, Lucas Lewis in his work of 1920 uh, proposed a three value logic where the third value he described as indeterminate and he believed that it is a value in itself. Stephen Klein, an American uh, logician who also attempts to do the same by finding solution to this to the problem of two value logic, accept that there is a, three, a, a, a third value, but that it is not a value in itself. He describes the indeterminate value as, as described by uh, uh, Jean-Luc Esawis as, as unknown and undecided. Hence, for him, it's not a value in itself. Luc Esawis himself also had to fall back. His explanation of indeterminate value did not really solve the problem of two value logic and actually establish his attempt to provide a third value because of the fact that he described the indeterminate value as, as neither true nor false. This is what has been described as reversed by violence by Chima Konam, which implies that in, in some way he falls back to the two valued or the by violence problem he was trying to transcend. In African climb, Innocent Asuzo and uh, Ijoma in their various works uh, have also made attempts to uh, overcome this problem by uh, uh, proposing a three value logic. Ijoma calls his own harmonious monism, which the first speaker and the keynote speaker had uh, elaborated on. And Innocent Asuzo spoke about his complementary logic. The challenge with these two is the fact that they seem to have overlooked or they seem to overlook the need to formulate a new theory or an additional, I mean, a new thought, a new law of thought or an additional law of thought that can weaken or relax the three value, the three traditional laws of thought that have been identified as being inadequate. And this is where Chima Konam lashed on in order to provide a kind of rescue route through his uh, is maze logic. Now, the need for a logic that is inspired by an African background ontology and worldview, and yet is universalizable and not, you know, restricted to a co African culture, gave impetus to the emergence of maze logic. Most importantly, maze logic is a systematic attempt at unmasking the age-long Western particular, elevated to the level of universal and absolute and driven by the Aristotelian two-value logic with all its inadequacies, as we mentioned already. So his major logic attempts to rewrite the grossly distorted history of rationality, history of logic, and the epistemologies of the global South. Now, the main thrust of his major logic is that his major is drawn from three Igbo notions, namely a zoo, which represents the value truth, Izu, representing force or falsity, the two traditional value in the Western uh, 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 logic system. And Izumezu, which is spelled with a small letter E, and that is a third value that is creating a complementation or the complemented parts. The third notion, Izumezu, is the middle value or the point of complementation which occurs the logical system, its name. Ezumezu, now written in capital letter. In this logic, greater power is shown to rest on the intermediate value. Ezumezu, therefore, for Chimakonam, is a collective, or connects a collective, aggregate or totality of all that is viable and most potent. So Ezumezu logic is trivalent or three value logic, which is symbolically represented with the letters T, F, and C. In Esmezu logic, and contrary to Western logic, T and F can complement in C, which is the third value. And this third value, remember, as we said in, during the background uh, uh, to this uh, Esmezu logic, is what Lucas Sewicks and the rest of the others have, have tried to uh, you know, pro propose to, but 
for them, it is still indeterminate. They do not know the value as it is because it, it, it's kind of hard to do with the future referential uh, proposition. It also, as well as the logic, also recognizes the context-dependent nature of propositions and the interdependence of variables and values. The, the, the principle of contextuality is very fundamental in Zumezu logic, and we'll talk more on it in the next, uh, as we continue. This exposes the inadequacies. Zumezu logic exposes the inadequacies of three laws of the two-value logic, and then it shows the need for additional laws that would strengthen them. This is where Zumezu logic overcomes the shortcomings of the attempts made by earlier scholars in Africa and the West in trying to solve the problem of two-value logic and its expressive ability and universal applicability. So Ismail's logic differs remarkably from Western two-value in, in, in two values, value logic in three ways. Number one, Ismail's logic is flexible in its mode of reasoning and application of the laws of thought. While Western logic is strict and rigid, which means that Western logic is a kind of a closed system exclusive that does not accommodate a thought value does not accommodate uh, realities that may not you know conform to the three traditional laws of thought is music logic on the other hand is 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 open and flexible in this mode of reasoning and then uh, it, it creates room and accommodates realities various realities and such is more universalizable as we'll show uh, shortly than the two value logic Again, Ismail's logic differs from the Western two values by the fact that it relaxes the three laws of thought, namely identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. It relaxes this law. And then thirdly, by relaxing this law, it now complements it. This is very important. It does not throw away the three laws. It does not reject it. It, is, it is, does not exclude it completely. That is the reason why it is flexible, accommodative, and not exclusive. Rather, it strengthens it by formulating three new or supplementary laws, namely Njikoka, Mekoka, and Onanetiti. We'll explain that shortly. And then the three additional laws of thought is important to underscore how they weaken and strengthen um, the three traditional laws of two-value logic. And this is very fundamental in understanding uh, the nature of Ismezu uh, logic. Now, these three value logic, these, these three supplementary laws of thought of Ismail works in tandem, works hand in hand with the three major metaphysical principles formulated by Chimakonam, namely the principle of relationality, contextuality, and complementarity. You can, I'm going to show us shortly how these principles work hand in hand with these three new additional laws in order to strengthen, weaken first, and then strengthen again in order to overcome the weaknesses of the three, I mean, the two value logic and these three traditional laws of thought. So, in Jikoka, as a new supplementary or additional law formulated by Chimakolam in the Smezu logical system, it states that a thing is what it is only in relation to its opposite. This is a relaxation of the law of identity, which states that a thing is what it is. So for Njikoka, uh, 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 the, the, the law of identity is weakened by applying the principle of relationality, African metaphysical principle of relationality. The, 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 this principle states that variables necessarily interrelate irrespective of their unique context all things being equal because no variable is alone in its entirety or can exist alone in its entirety is an ego solus so the law of Njikoka weakens the law of identity and then makes room for the opposite to be part of the uh, the, the variable that is being discussed in uh, at the at the at the moment Mekoka, which is the second additional law propounded by Chibakonam, 
to supplement the three laws of thought states that a thing is what it is and not its opposite only in specific context now again this particular new law or additional law of thought of Izumezu relaxes the law of contradiction which states that a thing being what it is cannot at the same time not be what it is so this new law called Mekoka applies the principle of contextuality which is drawn from African value system African ontology and worldview to weaken the, 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 the law of contradiction and then relaxes it in a manner that there will be room for the other. And then the law of contextuality, which works with Mekoka, states that every relationship between various variables occur in a specific context and can only be authenticated within the context because context is very important, much more than even facts. And so for uh, Chibakonam, uh, Mekoka law is a realization of the contradictory law, contradiction, law of contradiction using the contextual uh, principle. And then this also helps one to understand that a proposition in, 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 a, in a basic logic is true if and only if it is true in a given context and can be false in another context. So context is very important in the entire corpus of Ismezu logic. We will mention that again in the next few slides. I'm trying to see how I can be faster than I am now. And then the third new traditional law of thought is anonetity, which states that uh, A is both true and false. This particular law relaxes the law of a student middle which states that a thing is either what it is or what it is not, giving room for no middle uh, position, and which is a problem that uh, logicians before now, as we've said earlier, 